Hey guys, welcome. Today we're going to be doing a short video on how to create an app icon. There's actually a lot of different ways that you can go about it, but at the end of the day, all you need to do is fill in all of these little spots in the asset library of your Xcode project with the app icon images. I'll show you how I like to do it, but first let's take a look at Apple's human interface guidelines. It tells you what Apple recommends for app icon images. So here I'm looking at the human interface guidelines for iOS apps. Now this document contains a whole bunch of stuff on guidelines and recommendations from Apple on how to design your apps, not just from a graphics perspective, but also from a user experience perspective. So if you're going to be building a lot of apps, this is highly recommended reading. They have a section specifically on icons and images. And I'm gonna to link to this document in the description below so you can go ahead and check it out. But in this section, it tells you about um, what sort of image sizes you need to provide for your graphic assets. Now, the first thing you need to know is that there are different resolutions on the different iOS devices. So when you create a graphic asset for your app, you actually need to provide three different sizes. Now, this 1x is the original size. Uh, the 2x and the 3x are just two times and three times larger than the original size. You can see here, this is, if this is 10 by 10, this is 20 by 20, and the 3x would be 30 by 30. If you scroll down a little more, it tells you which devices use which scale factor. You notice that no devices use the 1x one because they don't produce those devices anymore. But if your app is going to be uh, supporting really old devices, like I think even the 4s, was that retina? I can't remember, but um, probably the 3g was definitely not retina. Um, but if you are planning to support really old devices, and I don't even know if your app could run on those anymore because I don't think the latest versions of iOS, the operating system, runs on those devices. Anyhow, it's not very hard to provide the 1x version as well because when you're creating your graphic asset in your graphics program, you just export them in all of the sizes that you need. But the most important sizes are the 3x and 2x ones. Here's some recommendations on how to uh, structure your artwork, but I'm going to skip that and go into the app icon section because this is what we're focusing on today. Now notice that all of these app icons here are pretty simple. There's a single point of focus, which is that simple uh, icon or imagery in the center. There's no fancy backgrounds, there's no photorealistic backgrounds, no uh, patterns and designs and stuff like that. The whole point of the app icon is really to convey what your app does at a glance. The user shouldn't have to look at that app icon for more than a few seconds to figure out what your app is or, or what it does. Here are the guidelines below those examples. It's most of what I've already said. Um, don't use words as part of the logos. Don't use screenshots, photos. Uh, don't show any Apple hardware because of trademarks and stuff like that. And also this one you might not realize is to keep your icon corners square. You don't have to make them round. The system automatically does that. So when you provide your artwork, it just do it in square corners. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit more, it tells you all of the different sizes that you need to provide your app icon in because your app icon doesn't just show up here on the home screen, right? If you scroll down a little bit, you can see it also shows up in the settings and notifications and stuff like that. All of these need different icon sizes and it tells you here and it differs from iPhone and iPad. Now a good way to figure out what sizes you need is just to look into your Xcode project. If you go into the asset library, in the app icon here, you can see for the different categories, like the notification icon, the spotlight icon, you know, iPhone app icon, it shows you the different sizes and also gives you spots to put in the 3X version and the 2X version. By default, it'll also have all of these iPad slots. And if you don't need uh, the iPad versions, because let's say your app is only for iPhones, then you can go ahead and highlight this in the inspector here, just uncheck iPad and it's going to remove all of those entries. So for iPhone apps, what you see here, that's all of the icons that you need. So you need a 20 point, you need a 29 point, a 40 point, a 60 point, 
and a 1024 for the App Store. Before we jump into the graphics program part, I just have to mention one more thing. You can either create your graphic assets in raster or vector format. If you don't know the difference, raster is drawing by coloring individual pixels, while vector is drawing using math and numbers and coordinates to describe all of the lines and curves. Now, you're not actually writing math equations or numbers when you're drawing with vector, but that is how those lines and curves are described under the hood. The advantage of vector graphics is that it can be enlarged and scaled up without losing quality, while raster graphics tend to look fuzzy when you zoom in or when you enlarge it. So that's why when you're choosing a graphics program to create your graphics in, it's best to choose a vector one. Now one such vector graphics program is called Sketch. It's a paid tool, however, you can also use a free one called Figma. Links in the description below. Now aside from that one recommendation of drawing your graphics in vector format, the actual graphics program you use to create your graphic assets in doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, it's going to boil down to your artistic skill and your familiarity with using that specific program. The good thing is that artistic ability can be improved and worked on. It's a skill just like any other. With that being said, let's get started. So I'm going to launch my graphics program. I'm using Sketch right here and it's a vector based graphics program. So it's going to allow us to scale the graphics up or down or any size without losing quality, which is really cool. If you're using a raster based graphics program like Photoshop, then you would just create your icon at the largest size and that would be 1024 at 3x. So you would just multiply this number by three and just create it at that size. So that's the largest size you would ever need and then just scale down to create all of these other sizes like 60, 40, 20 and 29 so that you don't lose any quality. All right, so let's jump back into sketch here in my new document. All I'm going to do is create a square. Now I'm going to hold down shift. It doesn't matter what the size is for now because I'm just going to resize it anyways. And I'm just going to make this really simple for the sake of demonstration. So I'm going to remove my border and for the fill, I'm just going to choose a gradient here. Uh, I'm just going to choose one of the default gradients like that. Now any graphics program you use should have this sort of basic core functionality, uh, which are gradients and stuff like that. Now you can either draw your icon um, or I use this program. It's actually a service called Icons8. You can go to icons8.com uh, and they have this handy Mac app, which I'm going to use. And you can just search for um, different icons and you can use it. Essentially, it's an icon service. Um, if you're graphically inclined, you can basically design your own. But I'm just gonna take one of these icons for the sake of demonstration. Uh, let's, take, let's take this one right here. Um, no, I don't like that one. Let's see. See, there's a different one here. Now, I know I'm saying this is for a demonstration, but I'm getting a little picky. So I'm just gonna, just gonna choose something simple. Yeah, let's choose something like that. And I'm going to just scale it up. Let's say something like that. I'm just gonna put this right in the middle. Now remember I said that you can export your uh, app icon at all of the different sizes you need uh, automatically. Now some graphics programs automatically have some sort of export feature which might let you do that. Um, I know Photoshop lets you specify different sizes to export your image at. Uh, for Sketch here, what I can do is I can just make sure that I group these assets together so I can export them as a whole and then I can make exportable and then I can do a 1x size, a 2x and a 3x or something like that. Now you can't see my screen is a little small but there are a couple of different sizes here. Oh, I accidentally closed it, okay. So I've got stuff like that. But another option that you can do, um, which I tend to use myself, is if you go into your Mac App Store and you just search for app icon, there are a ton of tools out there that lets you put in an image 
and then it spits out all of the different sizes you need. And it's really easy to use. So the one that I've been using recently is called App Icon Resizer and this one's free. And as you can see from the screenshot here, actually, let me just show you. The most important thing when you're looking for an app icon resizer like this is just to check the updated date because you wanna make sure that um, this app has been updated recently so that it conforms to the latest Apple guidelines for app icon sizes and such. As you can see here from the description, it works with Xcode 9, uh, 2017 to 2018. It was updated in December of 2017, so that's good. Let me just show you what this looks like. So I've got it here. I just choose my target device and then I just drag the icon in here. And that's it. Uh, first, I need to export this one at the largest size. So what I'm going to do, uh, remember how I told you that the largest size would be 1024 at the 3X version? So that would be, what would that be? That would be 3072. Um, but actually for the App Store icon, you don't need three different sizes. As you can see here, there's only one slot for the 1X size. And so you really only need to prepare the 1024 uh, version. That would be the largest you'd need ever. But for these guys right here, you need the 2X and the 3X. So 2X for the 60 point would be uh, 120 by 120, and this one would be 180 by 180. And this for the App Store would just be 1024 at 1x, which is just 1024. So what I'm gonna do for mine right here is I'm just going to resize it to 1024 by 1024. So let me scroll out a little bit. All right, and I'm just going to export this. I'm gonna export it to my desktop. and call it app icon and I should be able to see it on my desktop. Let's get rid of this, get rid of this. So there it is. I'm just gonna drag this icon over and it's gonna ask me where I wanna save it. I'm just gonna save it on the desktop. So as you can see here, it's provided all of the different sizes that I need. See the 20 at 2X and 3X, 29, 40, and 60. And this is the App Store version at 1024. And I can just go back here and then I can just, you know, drag these guys. Here's my 2X, here's my 3X. And if you're brave, you can try and do it this way, which sometimes works for me and sometimes doesn't. Okay, so that seemed to work this guy actually should be that guy. So there you go. So how was that? Not very difficult, right? Like I said, the actual graphics program that you use isn't really all that important. Even if you're using a raster graphics program, you would just start your canvas with the largest size you need, create your graphic asset at that size, and then scale it down so you don't lose quality into all of the little sizes that you need. If you like this video and you wanna see more, don't forget to subscribe. Just hit that red subscribe button below. And don't forget to turn on notifications if you don't wanna miss a single video. And if you wanna see more video tutorials like this before they're released anywhere else, make sure you visit codewithchris.com and join my newsletter because I release the videos there before they're published anywhere else. Now I wanna turn it over to you. What graphics program do you use? And another secondary bonus question, is there a specific graphics program you want me to demonstrate on my YouTube channel? Let me know by leaving me a quick comment below. All right, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Hey, did you join my free Facebook community yet? That's where I hang out along with a ton of other people learning iOS just like yourself. I also post early access to all of my videos inside that group before I put them on YouTube. You can also get help with any questions you're having. Visit the link below Click on the join group button and I'll approve your request right away. Alright, so I'll see you in there. Talk soon.